Whether you're just starting out in business or you've been in business for a little while, whether your business is growing way faster than you expected or way slower than you expected, those transition phases between levels can be really stinking awkward. And that's what I want to talk about today. I'm Nikki Elich Brown, the communication stylist, and in this video I want to introduce you to my latest awkward metaphor, biz puberty. And there are a squillion directions we could take this in the comments, and I'm quite confident that we will take it in many interesting directions in the comments. But for the purpose of this video, I just want to share with you my experience in the last several months of a really awkward growing phase in my business. And then I want to equip, equip you, excuse me, with my top five tips on how to survive biz puberty on your own over there. This concept first came to my mind after the big second launch of A Course About Copy when we opened um, in August of 2014, and it was a huge month. We ended up making as much in a month, I say we, I do have people supporting me, but like basically I'm my own employee, um, part of that biz puberty identity crisis, but in a month we made as much as we made in my whole first year, which was really crazy, and I had a lot of people asking me after and during that launch, like, Who's your launch strategist? Who's your coach? You know, like what's going on? And it kind of cracked me up and I was confiding in my girlfriends like, y'all, they think I am so organized or that this was really premeditated and I always boil my launch and business strategy down into two steps. Number one, get the hunch. Number two, do the work. And so, like, I guess you could say, like, God is my business coach because I just kind of feel like, ooh, that would be a good idea and I know that that didn't just come into my brain out of nowhere. And then I get to work or I find the people who can help me make it happen. And that's what happened with that launch. But the thing is, over the last few weeks, too, it keeps popping in. Like, oh, you need organization help? Oh, I assumed you already had someone doing this for you. And I realized my front end of my business looks really polished because I do have a beautiful website that I love and am really happy about. And I have had bouts of huge productivity with my launches and things. But in reality, it's pretty messy over here. I don't feel like I've grown into my body. Um, like my business on the front end looks like a grown ace woman. And then back here, I'm feeling like a teenager. Like, wait, I need help. I, I haven't had an assistant for several months now. And I'm feeling it. So I'm investing in systems this year. And I hope to grow into my maturity this year in 2015. I'm turning 30 in June. So it's a perfect time to do that. But the reality is, like, I don't have it all together. If someone thinks that I do please know that I do not. And you can revisit my first video blog called How a Business or How Running a Business is Like Breastfeeding to revisit my notion and my realization that just because something comes naturally doesn't mean it comes easily. So give people around you a little credit. Give yourself a little credit for just whatever the heck you're doing. As long as you're doing something to move your dream forward, that's great. So that's my experience with biz puberty. That's why I wanted to talk about this today, to let you know that it's normal. Here are the five tips for surviving it and making it through. Number one, own it. Be real with where you are. If somebody thinks you're further along than you are behind the scenes or whatever, don't feel like you have to pretend that you are. And I'm not saying talk down about yourself or like, you know, deflect compliments. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying keep it real. Be honest about where you are. People appreciate that sincerity and knowing that they that you're honest about it and you're not trying to pretend to be Instagram perfect you know and that's where we can learn those lessons when we share and we can actually connect and relate obviously I'm really passionate about that because it's what my whole freaking business is about number two try not to compare you know like you would in high school or middle school to the girl who has you know I had curly red crazy hair and I didn't know how to handle hair products and so my friends that had this beautiful straight hair and they were all experimenting with highlights that just was not going to work for me it wouldn't do me any good to compare try not to compare yourself to the people the next tab over because everybody's running her own race she may be even stuffing her bra or using a fake ID or something you don't know she may be pretending to be further along on the outside and on the inside she just wishes that she had an engaged community even if it's a smaller list size or whatever maybe she wishes she had that so you just don't know just run your race and don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle I don't know who said that, but it's out there. And maybe I'll Google it and link to it below. But don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. You just never know what's going on behind the scenes. And really, it's none of your business. Literally, mind your business. Okay, so own it. Keep it real. Number two is um, don't compare. Try not to compare. 
Number three, find great girlfriends, just like the ones who helped you survive middle school and high school, and hopefully you're still in touch with those BFFs too. Find some biz buddies who can help you make the solopreneur thing feel not so solo, because I can't tell you how invaluable my friends have been to me. I feel like I have a cabinet of what I call friend tours who help me. You know, I laugh with them, I cry with them, I text with them at all hours of the day because they're all over the world, which is very convenient for me. I pray with them. They're my everything when it comes to my business. I cannot be where I am without my my friends, my friend tours, my biz buddies. So if you don't have any, just reach out, truly. That's how most of my friends became friends. A lot of them were clients or customers of mine first. Um, and then some just reached out like, hey, I think we would be friends. You want to talk? And that's it. You know, like it's not like it's college where it's easier to make new friends, but you can just reach out and put yourself out there. Obviously, if it's worth it and it's a true friendship, she will totally be receptive to that and say, heck yeah, let's meet up. You know, it's not like a pick your brain situation at all. It's just truly, it's good to have friends. So that's number three. Own it. Don't compare lean on BFFs during this awkward time and all times. Number four, find resources. As a teenager, maybe you relied on Seventeen Magazine, you know, to answer all the questions that you were too embarrassed to ask. Now we have Google and YouTube and blogs and people who are a few steps ahead of us who are sharing their nuggets of wisdom along the way. I like to consider myself your crash test smarty so that I'm going through and maybe I'm a couple steps ahead of you and then I'm passing it back to let you know the silver linings and the lessons of what I'm learning. And there are so many lovely people out there who are doing exactly the same in your particular area of business. So lean on resources. And that also means hire help, you know, like I'm hiring help to get systems in place this year. Um, and I am looking for a really great assistant and a dream team to build in 2015. So don't feel like you have to do it on your own or suffer with those questions in silence. Get resources. So own it, be real, don't compare, lean on BFFs, seek help and resources. And then the last fifth tip is keep a journal. It won't be like this for long. You will not always be in this position. You don't want to forget the lessons, first of all, because again, you can take the lesson out of any crappy situation and throw the rest away. But also, it's just kind of like a little growth chart, you know? Um, you will be surprised six months from now how much you've grown because you just won't realize it because you're experiencing it every day. So my son, again, this is a different analogy, but when we went to the doctor last time, I could have sworn he was going to be nine inches shorter than he actually was. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's been growing this whole time. When people email me and say, Nikki, it's been so amazing to watch your journey and to watch your growth, I'm like, huh. Yeah, I forgot less than two years ago I was making paychecks of the heart as less than $14 an hour as a park ranger. And the idea of a business, I didn't even know where to start. Like, you just forget. So track that stuff. Keep a journal, whether it's on your blog, if it's relevant to your business or maybe not. Um, keep an actual journal. But chart your growth because you will just be tickled by it. You'll be so glad you saved that screenshot of your awkward splash page the day before you started a course about copy and rewrote your site and it was all amazing. Okay. In closing, I know I'm talking really fast because I had a feeling this would be a long video. Just know you're not alone. This is totally normal. You are supported by all of these amazing women in my community and in many other communities all over the internet. Um, you can find those biz buddies. I just want you to know that as long as you listen for hunches and you do the work, you will blossom in divine timing. So maybe you're not me, the awkward five, six, 13 year old who towers over all of the boys. Um, maybe you're the one who's teeny tiny the freshman year in high school and you don't actually grow and get your boobies until after high school graduation. Um, but then you've blossomed in your own time and you have to trust that. As long as you're listening for hunches and you're clearing the mental clutter and you're leaving room to do the work and you've got good girlfriends to support you, you will absolutely blossom in divine timing. So I just wanted to sister to sister entrepreneur or to Mr. Entrepreneur, if you're a dude, um, I just wanted to send that encouragement, let you know I do not have all my stuff together, including this cabinet. My dining office is also in an awkward transition phase. <laughs> and we'll be painting that and decorating it soon over the next few weeks, but that's it. Biz puberty is real. It's awkward. It's not comfortable, but it's okay, and it's normal. We can talk about it. So speaking of talking about it, in the comments at NikkiLHBrown.com, I would love to hear your experiences with growing pains in your business. What did you do that helped you survive it? Or if you just have a really funny, you know, way to extend upon this metaphor, then by all means, feel free to share it in the comments below. 
I am so thankful that you live in my corner of the internet and that you spent time with me today. I hope this was helpful for you, and I will see you next time.